You never know what you're going to find at the thrift store. But the one thing that you're always guaranteed to find is a whole lot of DIY potential at bargain prices. So this week, I challenged myself to find 10 thrift store items, each costing less than $5, and transform them into stylish home decor. In today's video, I'll be sharing how I upcycled those 10 thrift store finds in various and sometimes surprising ways. So if you're ready for some unique and affordable home decor ideas, let's get started. I was attracted to this candlestick for its flower-like shape. And although I didn't mind the black finish, I thought it would look even prettier gold. So I used a small paintbrush to brush on antique gold rub and buff wax over the entire candlestick. And I was really happy with the new metallic finish. Instead of just adding a candle, I wanted to add something totally unexpected. And so I tried turning some glass bottles upside down. I ended up hot gluing a glass lamp finial into the candle cup. It fit perfectly. To create a metal butterfly, I cut up a soda can and placed it on a strong grip Cricut mat. I used the metal setting on my Cricut machine and ran the mat through three times to cut completely through the soda can. You could also cut it out with a small pair of sharp scissors. The rub and buff wouldn't stick to the aluminum, so first I spray painted it gold and when it was dry, then I applied the rub and buff. Then I used a little bit of Gorilla Glue to attach the butterfly to the glass finial. Taking apart a lamp, or in this case, a wall sconce, is much easier than you might think. First, I loosened and removed the nut on the back of the wall plaque, which is mostly holding all of the lamp pieces together. Next, I used a flathead screwdriver to loosen the socket shell from the socket base, and then pulled off the socket shell and removed the insulation sleeve. Now I could see the wires wrapped around two screws, one on each side of the socket. I loosened the screws and pulled the wires free. Then I removed all the lamp parts from the wire, making sure that I kept them in order for easier reassembly. I didn't know if this was going to work or not, but I wanted to attach the light fixture to the front of an old dictionary. I opened the book to its center and laid it face down with half of the pages spread out on each side. I chose a drill bit the same size as the sconce arm and drilled a hole through the center of the book spine, making sure it came through the center of the pages on the back side too. At this point, I ran the cord through the drilled hole, but you'll see that I ended up removing it so that it was easier to attach the sconce arm. I cut and tore out several pages from the book's center to make room for the cord and for the nut. I knew I didn't want to use the large metal wall plaque, and I also decided just to use the decorative metal washer and not the wood round. On the front side of the spine, I hot glued the decorative metal washer to the book. Then I pushed the sconce arm through the washer and through the drilled hole until the threaded end poked through the back side of the book. The nut that came with the sconce was extra wide, so I found a sturdy but smaller nut to use to attach the sconce arm. This would hold the arm upright and also allow the book to be fully closed. 
I ran the cord through the arm and then returned all of the other lamp parts in the correct order. Although I would have liked to have left some of these decorative pieces off, they have to be used because the top section of the arm is the exact length needed for the socket base to screw tightly onto the threaded end of the arm and hold everything snugly in place. Once the socket base was screwed on tightly, I wrapped the wire ends back around the screws and tightened them. To get the socket back in the base, pull on the opposite end of the cord, then replace the insulation sleeve and the socket shell. You'll need to push on the shell until it pops into the base. Dated wall art is readily available at thrift stores. I picked up three of these dark brown medallions for $2.29 each. For the first one, I was going to try decoupaging this dark floral napkin over the center design. I trimmed up a piece of napkin to cover about half of the design. I removed the two white back plies, keeping just the top patterned layer. I brushed a coat of Mod Podge over the medallion design, making sure to get down in the cracks, and then I pressed the napkin into place. I brushed another coat of Mod Podge over the top of the napkin. I cut out a couple more pieces of napkin and then repeated the process until the entire design was completely covered with napkin. The frame had a copper hue that you often see in Tuscan style home decor, and I'm just not very fond of that look, so I painted the frame with a couple coats of black chalk paint. Once the Mod Podge dried, I debated whether to distress the napkin or not. I decided to use a little sandpaper on it because I wanted the original design to show through a bit. I also distressed the frame to reveal just a little bit of that original copper color. At this point, I decided to paint the inner portion of the frame with some navy blue acrylic paint to accentuate the blue in the napkin. Finally, I brushed on antiquing wax. I dabbed it on the napkin where the distressing had created some white spots. Then I applied it to the frame, wiping off the excess with a rag. I like how it turned out. I think it has a unique look, but you'll have to let me know what you think. I still had two more of these wall plaques left, so this time I painted them both with some off-white chalk paint. It took two coats to get full coverage. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed just the center medallion on both plaques with some sandpaper. For the first plaque, I cut the border off of a blue and white napkin and then cut it into four strips. I removed the back plies from each strip and then applied Mod Podge to the frame and applied one strip of napkin to each side. I used my paintbrush to smooth out any wrinkles and then I wrapped the extra napkin around the back edge of the plaque. To create a mitered look in the corners, when overlapping the top napkin, I cut the corner at a diagonal from the outer corner to the inner corner. Once each strip of napkin was smoothed out over the frame, I brushed on a protective top coat of Mod Podge. For the second plaque to coordinate with the first one, 
This time, I cut the center portion of the napkin into four strips to cover the frame. Because these strips were shorter, the corners of the frame were not completely covered. So I cut out four individual flowers from the napkin and decoupaged them over the bare spots in the corners. I usually wait about an hour for the Mod Podge to be fully dry. Then I use sandpaper to remove the excess napkin from the back edges. Then I brush a little Mod Podge over the edges to keep them from tearing or coming loose. You'll have to let me know which look you prefer. Do you like the dark napkin on the medallions or the blue and white napkins on the frames? I loved all of the scroll work on this corner shelf, and I couldn't believe that Goodwill was selling it for less than $4. The wood was thin and really dry, and the finish was flaking off, so the best option was to paint it. I started by spraying it with Zenser Primer. This would keep the dark stain from soaking through my paint. Even with primer, it took two coats of an off-white chalk paint to get full coverage. I thought about painting it a fun color like green, but I wanted to use some rub-on transfers, and I just think transfers look best on white paint. I had some leafy branch transfers left from IOD's Whispering Willow package, before applying the transfers, I figured out the placement and cut them into smaller pieces to fit on each side and both above and below each shelf. This would avoid possible rips and tears that would likely occur if I folded the transfer and tried to apply it to both sides at one time. I used the plastic tool that comes with the transfers to rub the transfer onto the shelf. I added a bird, a butterfly, and some mushrooms for additional interest. When I was done, I used a piece of rolled up sandpaper to remove any transfers that were stuck in the decorative openings. I like a distressed look, so I also sanded over some of the shelf edges. This might seem a bit summery for October, but in my opinion, Birds and greenery look good any time of the year. I bought this oval frame for just $1.49. I'm not sure what it's made from. I think it might be some kind of hard foam. I didn't mind the black paint on it and wanted to see what it would look like distressed. It didn't have glass or a back, so I traced out the inner oval shape onto a piece of cardboard and cut it out. To create artwork for the frame, I cut a page from a vintage wallpaper book that I bought at an estate sale last year. I cut out an oval of wallpaper and adhered it to the cardboard with spray adhesive. I chose this blue and yellow wallpaper specifically to coordinate with a bird transfer that I wanted to use. I just thought it would be really whimsical and unexpected to add a bird image on top of this very vintage looking wallpaper. The bird transfer is also from the Whispering Willows IOD package. To update the frame, I applied some antique gold rub and buff with my finger on the raised ridges on the frame. 
And then since the black paint was pretty scratched up, I repainted over the black areas of the frame with black chalk paint. I thought the black paint was a little stark in comparison with the blue and yellow wallpaper. So to tone it down, I brushed over the frame with white wax and then wiped away the excess. Next, I inserted the cardboard oval into the frame and since it fit snugly, all I needed to do was apply hot glue around the edge to secure it in place. At this point, I decided a small floral transfer would look cute on the frame, but I wasn't sure it would adhere since I had waxed the frame. Luckily, it transferred perfectly. The back side of the frame looked really junky, so to clean it up, I cut an oval from craft paper, removed the D-rings, adhered the paper to the back of the frame with spray adhesive, and then replaced just one of the D-rings. I'm not sure if this skinny shelf served any purpose or if it was just meant to hold knickknacks, but since it only cost $1.49, I brought it home with me. I painted just the back wall inside each little cubicle with a couple coats of an off-white chalk paint. I wanted to apply some small individual rub-on transfers in each of the cubicles. I decided to cut out individual eggs from Mio's Pages IOD package. Honestly, I don't think I'll ever use all of the transfers in this book. I planned out the arrangement and then I used the provided plastic tool to rub the transfers onto the shelf. To go along with the egg theme, I thought it would be cute to add a small bird's nest to the top of the shelf. I twisted a bit of angel vine into a small circle and used some florist wire to hold its shape. Then I just hot glued it to the top shelf. Then I hot glued a small piece of styrofoam in the center of the vine. I found a wood bird in my stash and hammered a small nail on its underside. The nail, in combination with some additional hot glue, would keep the bird firmly attached to the styrofoam. Then I hot glued some Spanish moss to cover the styrofoam, and finally added a few pip berries for additional interest. I see these little wood scoops at thrift stores quite often. This one was smaller than most and only $1.49. I wanted to paint the scoop but not the handle, so I unscrewed it and set it aside. Then I painted the scoop with two coats of Waverly's Cashew chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the edges with sandpaper. To cover the inside back of the scoop, I cut up a note card from a package I purchased at a thrift store. I used spray adhesive rather than Mod Podge to adhere the note card to the wood because Mod Podge would likely have caused the heavy notebook paper to wrinkle and bubble. I used an X-Acto knife to trim the top edge of the card to match the shape of the scoop. Then I used some sandpaper to smooth over the cut edge. I had some random word transfers left over from other projects that I applied to the front of the box, and then I just lightly distressed over the wording with sandpaper. Lastly, I applied clear wax to the painted areas to seal and protect the paint and the word transfers.
I actually found two leafy candlesticks at the thrift store. This one was shorter and wider than the other one. Rather than using rub and buff, this time I decided to paint the leaves with green chalk paint. I painted both the tops and the undersides of all the leaves. Once again, I wanted to add something to the stand more interesting than a candle. First, I cut and hot glued a piece of styrofoam to the center. Then I made a circle of angel vine just large enough to fit around the styrofoam. This time, I soaked the vine in a bowl of water for a few minutes first to make it easier to shape into a circle. Then I made a few mushrooms by cutting up some sticks from my yard and hot gluing each stick to the center of an acorn cap, also from my yard. I made several mushrooms and inserted the sticks into the styrofoam, and then I hot glued moss over the styrofoam. I wanted to add a butterfly for a pop of color, and if you've watched my channel before, you know what I am about to do. I cut out the top portion of a Dollar Tree transparent butterfly sticker and hot glued it to one of the acorn caps. By this time, the green paint was dry, so I applied some antiquing wax to add some depth and dimension to the leaves. I also applied some antiquing wax to the candle arms and then dabbed the excess with a paper towel. I don't know if you can tell, but this bowl is huge, 18 inches across. But I was not loving the peach design. So the first thing I did was spray both sides of the bowl with Zinser Primer. Although I've made things using air dry clay in the past, for some reason I've never tried using a mold. So I thought I would try out this pretty pumpkin mold from IOD. First, I dusted the mold with cornstarch to keep the clay from sticking. Then I softened up a piece of clay in my hands and began pushing it into the mold. I completely filled the shape and then pushed any excess clay off the edges. The leaves looked pretty level, but the large pumpkin, once it was filled, looked lumpy and uneven, so I rolled a plastic brayer over it, which really leveled it out nicely. To release the clay shapes, I placed the mold face down on my craft table and carefully rolled the mold off. This was seriously just as easy as it looks. Once I had the arrangement worked out, I applied wood glue to the back of the clay, using a paintbrush to make sure that it was fully covered. Then I flipped it over and carefully arranged it. The leaves were separate molds, so I arranged them so that they would be attached to the pumpkin stem. I didn't wait for the clay to dry. I went ahead and immediately painted the inside and outside of the bowl with Waverly's Cashew Chalk Paint. I applied two separate coats of paint, and when the second coat was dry, I brushed white wax over the pumpkins and all of the cashew paint, lightly dabbing away the excess. It took me a while to decide on a paint color for the bowl's rim, and I finally chose Waverly's Hazelnut Chalk Paint, which was a soft accent to the cashew paint. Although I liked the look created by the white wax alone, I decided that a pumpkin bowl needed a little antiquing wax. I didn't want it to be too dark, so I used some watered-down antiquing wax that would mostly come off with a rag. At this point, I was really happy with how it looked. And then I made a careless mistake. I sprayed it with a clear top coat. Heed my advice, 
Use wax or a spray top coat, not both. Some of the paint bubbled and blistered. I was so mad at myself that I didn't even film it. I scraped off the blistered paint, repainted and waxed those areas. But I won't be selling it because I can't guarantee that the paint won't peel off sometime in the future. Thank you so much for watching today. And if you enjoy bargain thrift flips like these, here's another video I think you may like.